As a talent manager at the BBC, you mentioned you spend all day interviewing. You must see millions of CVs and, and covering letters and applications. What are the classic mistakes that you see candidates make when they when they apply to you? Um, classic mistakes, probably uh, overwriting, poor layouts, not listing their skills and experience clearly, not listing what they did on the shows that they worked on. Um, I'm not interested. I, obviously, it's useful to have a summary sometimes, but what I, the important things are the broadcaster, the production company, the exec producer, the, and the actual job title and, and how long somebody was on a project, because those are all the things that I'm looking for. I'm looking to, I'm trying to evaluate what sort of skills and experience that person has. And if they're not explaining it, or if they're using the, the CV to write irrelevant things about what the program's about, then it's a missed opportunity. And, and I think it always a summary at the top rather than a mission statement of listing the skills and experience uh, that they have is always useful, you know, and, and people underestimate the, the benefit of, especially at entry level, of being able to drive, of having a clean driving license, of speaking languages, of being able to use a camera, any sort of relevant training like FCP training or uh, shooting or writing or journalism. Those are all key skills to put at the top. Um, spelling mistakes I find annoying, and if someone can't express themselves on, on a CV clearly and concisely and in a, in a way that's well written, then I wouldn't probably consider them. Do CVs and covering letters still cut it, or uh, do people need to do something more creative? I mean, have you seen any creative applications, whether it's uh, you know YouTube videos or short pieces of work uh, that have uh, worked well for you? Um, if people include a link to a short film or a, a, a link to YouTube or a Vimeo clip, I, I might often click on it. Um, but really, I mean, I suppose, me, speaking for myself personally, you know, the first thing I'm going to see is the covering letter within the body of an email. So that's crucial they get it right in terms of telling me who they are, what they've done and what they're looking for when they're available and who they've worked with. And then obviously the, the CV can tell me more. But obviously, if, um, you know, if depending on, I mean, if, they, if it was a director who made lots of hours, if I hadn't watched the programs, I would then go on to their show reel to have a look at how they shoot and, and, and their, their, the documentaries they've made. In some ways, it's less important at um, junior level, unless, of course, I'm looking for a shooting researcher or someone who I know can shoot to a certain standard and handle a camera proficiently or, or you know, can, can do sound. I'd, I'd be looking for evidence of that. You talk in the book about the golden rules of interviews. Could you just expand on what these are uh, for us and how candidates can impress Golden rules. Well, there are a number of things. I mean, I'd start by saying that it's important to be able to express yourself clearly, to articulate what you've done in a concise way, to answer the questions that are asked of you, to do research about the company, if you can, about their output, the kind of programs they make, and have reasons why you want to work with them and have ideas and suggestions, and a clear sense of, of, of your skills and how they match what the employer might be looking for. Um, when I meet people, I want to kind of get a sense of what they're like as a person. So I ask them about themselves and as well as the programs they've made. And so I just try and get a sense of how they work and to get, you know, and often I will ask for, if it's not on their CV, who they've worked with and, and for telephone numbers. And, and you know, so I want to, because so when they've gone, I, I might talk to people that have worked with them about them. Obviously, that's sort of part of my job is to collect references, but also the people they might not necessarily think that I would contact. The key thing is to is to go with preparation, to know. I mean, I've you know interviewed people who can't remember the name of the producer they've worked with, <laughs> and it makes me think. Well, how long? How a how come you've forgotten? And b did you really work with that person? Yep. So it's, it's things like that, and also if you prepare by watching the output, if you have any nerves, at least you'll be speaking from a position of confidence and knowledge if you're asked about programs you've worked on as well as the pro uh, as well as the programs that the company makes because they want to know that you've written to them and that you have you understand their brand and output and i think a big no is not to to know the programs and, and it's and you definitely don't crib from looking on the internet at their company website because that might not be up to date and it might be a little bit behind you know, often, for example, when I was at Dragonfly, they had outputs going back two or three years, but they weren't, wouldn't have necessarily had the most recent output. And you should be showing in interviews that you watch television, that you've got an awareness, that you understand what's rating and why, and you know what you like and why. 
because so, it won't just be about your CV and what you've done. It'll also be, you know, people who are interviewing are trying to get an understanding of how you think. 